In chapter 3, we're going to look at our antiplatelet drugs. This figure does a very nice job of illustrating the common targets for antiplatelet drugs. Start in the upper right hand corner with the actions of aspirin. As an inhibitor of cyclooxygenase, aspirin is going to inhibit the production of thromboxane A2, a very important stimulant for platelet aggregation. Alternatives to aspirin therapy include the ADP receptor blockers like clopidogrel and ticlopidine. So blocking ADP receptors is a second mechanism for being an antiplatelet drug. Our third mechanism involves blocking the glycoprotein 2B3A receptors with drugs like abcixumab. Remember that these are receptors for fibrinogen. If we block these receptors, that would be our third antiplatelet mechanism. The text does a nice job of summarizing what we just discussed in the figure regarding thrombus formation. Remember the different factors that are going to cause platelet aggregation? Think about the ways that we can use drugs to stop those different actions. Aspirin is our most popular antiplatelet drug. As we covered in the earlier section, aspirin is going to irreversibly inhibit cyclooxygenase in platelets and basically inhibit the production of thromboxane A2 for the life of the platelet. Low doses of aspirin, that would be what we call a baby aspirin, 81 milligrams, can prevent an MI and recurrence. It's also very important in the prophylaxis and atrial arrhythmias and in TIAs. But all of the other important properties of aspirin have been previously covered in Section 6. The ADP receptor blockers have a common ending for their names. That would be GREL, clopidogrel, prazugrel, and ticagrelor. Not quite at the end, but close enough. The one that's spelled differently is ticlopidine. And perhaps this drug is outstanding because of the four, it's the least likely one for me to use. That's because of its side effects, including thrombocytopenic purpura. These drugs as ADP receptor blockers are excellent alternatives to patients who cannot tolerate aspirin in the treatment of TIAs, post-MI, and unstable angina. I can even combine these drugs with aspirin in patients with non-ST elevation acute coronary syndromes. We also have the glycoprotein 2B3A receptor blockers. There are three drugs, abcixumab, which is the monoclonal antibody targeted to this receptor, and then we have the drugs eptafibatide and tyrofibam. You'll notice that I've highlighted the FIB, FIB, as part of their name. I actually think that this helps you to remember their mechanism of action. What do the FIB drugs block? They block the glycoprotein 2B3A receptor, which are receptors for fibrinogen. So maybe that's an easy way for you to remember. These drugs are useful in acute coronary syndromes and also post-angioplasty. Now that we have finished this section, let's do a couple of practice questions. Here's the first one. Pause the video, review on your own, and then we will discuss. A 65-year-old man is brought to the emergency department because of weakness of his right side and difficulty with speech. He has a history of hypertension and diabetes. CT of the head rules out intracranial hemorrhage. The most appropriate treatment is a drug with which of the following mechanisms? Well, if you identify that this patient is having a stroke, because of the stroke and the clot, we want to use one of our thrombolytic drugs. Possibly we're going to consider TPA for this. How do these drugs work? They're going to catalyze the conversion of plasminogen to plasmin. Answer choice C. Here's question two. Pause the video, review the question on your own, and then we will discuss. A 75-year-old man is brought to the emergency department because of crushing substernal chest pain that started to occur after he began mowing his lawn. The patient states the pain radiated to his jaw and left arm. The EKG shows ST depression in the anterior leads. After further evaluation, the physician recommends percutaneous coronary intervention plus a glycoprotein 2B3A inhibitor. What drug below was used in this patient? Well, if it's a 2B3A inhibitor, those are drugs which block 
the receptors for fibrinogen. Perhaps you remembered the naming trick here, eptifibotide. The fibrinogen receptor blocker is blocking those 2B3A receptors. Choice C is correct.